Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another segment of ASAF Cafe. I didn't realize we were on camera already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's the impromptuness of this show. I know. Anyway, I am ASAF Adonai, your host, and on my immediate left, affectionately, our aging rocker, Emmett. So we're going to do a one-on-one, -on -one, and I normally don't talk about religion or politics, but we're sort of going to make an exception today and make the comparisons of all the religions in the world. Yeah. And the comparisons between Christ and all the other gods yes. in the world, like Allah and Confucian. Absolutely. And all of that. Well, you want to start us off there? Heavenly Father, bless our time to get our, our food in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm in agreement there. And how I'm going to do this, I'm going to let this here um, do some of the work for us. You mm -hmm. know, I'll show you. Let this start here. Because I'm going to read something while we're doing this. All right. And here's how I'm going to start this. So I'm going to find something soft here. Okay, I guess Chopin's fine. Yeah. Anyway, this is from my autobiography, mm -hmm. which uh, you've already read here. Yes. And this is the section titled, Walk With Him By Faith. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should just turn that off. Hold on. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. This is entitled, Walk With Him By Faith. Mm -hmm. My divine appointment came. I was 12 when I went to a church called Hillsdale Boulevard Baptist Church in California. Mrs. Lois Stevens was there at the time, but there was no way to know that one day she would become my second mom. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was 12 years old. I did not know that yeah. years later she would become my second mom. Every person who has ever lived wants to go to heaven when they die. Mm -hmm. Now here's, the com here's our first comparison. We're yes. going to talk about Buddhism. Yes. Buddhism teaches that there is no personal God that exists. Ah. Oh. That's what the Buddhists mm -hmm. believe. I'll say it again. Buddhism teaches that there is no personal God that exists. Hinduism... Hinduism teaches that God is formless, he's abstract, and he takes on a form in a trinity as well as millions of lesser gods. Mm -hmm. That's what the Hindus believe. The Bible teaches that God is a person who created man in his own image and loves us Yes, and wants us to have a personal relationship with him. So if you just make those two comparisons right there, you can see that according to the New Testament, God is personalized. Mm -hmm. See if you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, God is a person. You notice uh, Buddhism doesn't say that God is a person, neither does Hinduism. Right. And so when I'm making these comparisons, I'm not here to attack anybody's belief. Right, right. I'm, I just want to make that clear. I'm just making a comparison here that that's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. God is a person. And this person who is God created all people in his own image uh -huh. that's something buddhism doesn't teach hinduism doesn't teach that and that god loves us you mm -hmm. don't see any reference to you being loved by what the Bo buddhism is teaching and hinduism is teaching right no, no indication about a personal relationship now let's make the comparisons about christ concerning jesus christ once again the buddhists teach that jesus was a good teacher Mm -hmm. but less important than Buddha. Mm -hmm. That's what the Buddhists teach. Yep. See, they, they, their God is Buddha. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the Hindus believe that Jesus was one of many incarnations or sons of God, mm -hmm. but Christ was not the son of God. That's what the Hindus believe. Mm -hmm. The Muslims believe that Jesus Christ was only a man, a prophet equal to Adam, Noah or Abraham, all who are below Muhammad in importance to them. Mm -hmm. And they believe that Jesus did not die for the sins of man. Yeah. That's what the Muslims believe. Yes. Now the Bible, let's find out what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches that He, Jesus, was God in human form. Mm -hmm. You see, that's very clear. Jesus wasn't some prophet or some good man or some good teacher. 
He was God in a body, yeah. God in human form. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of the religions in the world have trouble with. They yeah. have trouble believing that God can send his only son to this mm -hmm. earth in a human body. So he was not only man, but he was God. Right, right. That's a mystery. But that's who Jesus Christ was mm -hmm. and is. He was God in human form. He mm -hmm. came to this planet. You, you look at First John. Uh, not First John, the, the book of John. In the beginning was the Word. Uh-huh. And the word was God. Yes. And the, yeah, the word was God. And he came unto his own, meaning his creation. That, mm -hmm. that was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then you look at this here. Of course, Jesus says in John 14, 6, he is the way, mm -hmm. the truth, the life. And Jesus is standing at the door of your heart and your life right mm -hmm. now as we're talking. And he's knocking. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that if you will hear his voice and open the door, he'll come into your heart. Exactly. So that's kind of the comparison there. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to leave these notes open and I'm going to start playing here. But um, you see, the problem is, let me start playing some chords here as I start talking. All right. Back there. Here we go. See, people just, how can I put it? They seem to have trouble with truth. I know. And what I mean by truth is truth by the New Testament. Because, you know, the thing about what I understand about the Muslim belief, mm -hmm. they're, they're always working. They're doing works for mm -hmm. Allah, hoping that that'll be enough for them to get into heaven. Yes. And the question is, question is, how do you know how many works you've done? Mm -hmm. How do you know if you've done enough works mm -hmm. to please Allah, as uh -huh. the Muslims believe? Mm -hmm. You never know. And where the New Testament says you cannot earn your way or work mm -hmm. your way into God's presence or mm -hmm. into heaven. So if we cannot work our way, something had to be done. So uh -huh. God yeah. did it. He sent this son. On, <clears throat> excuse me. He sent this son on a rescue mission to come to this earth, to live a perfect life, to live all of God's requirements by the law, in you know, the Old Testament law, and so on. And he also came for the express purpose of dying on a cross taking our penalty that we deserve. See, this is, the, this is the point that people don't like. We're all under a death sentence. Right, right. Even though we get to enjoy the sunshine, we get to go to school, we get to be a pianist like me, <laughs> mm -hmm. we're still spiritually under a death sentence, even though we get to enjoy all the good things in life. And that death sentence, that, that death sentence that we're under has to be fixed. Yeah. So God sent his son to pay that death penalty on our behalf by dying on that cross and shedding his blood, taking the wrath and the anger and the judgment of God upon himself. Yes. Instead of God punishing us, he punished his own son. Right. His son shed his blood and died and paid that death penalty. Mm -hmm. And now that that death penalty is paid, God can offer a complete pardon. Right. All we have to do is turn from our sin, one, two, believe that Jesus died on that cross, and three, by faith, ask Christ into your heart as your Savior. Mm -hmm. Because that's the gift that God is offering. And the moment you ask Christ to be your Savior, you could be at home or in a church service, you could be in your car, it doesn't make any difference. You hear the, you hear the gospel message that Christ died for your sins, and then you by faith ask him into your heart. You can say something like, God, mm -hmm. I'm sorry for my sin. I believe your son died for me. Be my Savior. What, whatever, however you express it. The moment you ask Christ to be your savior, your sins are forgiven at that moment. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you'll never do anything wrong. But when you get to the end of your life, God is not going to see your sin. He's going to see the blood of Christ mm -hmm. covering that part of you, that invisible spiritual part of you that was separated. Mm -hmm. And that is, <clears throat> that is how you're going to get into heaven, not by works. We you can't, know. you know, uh, we Catholics believe very similar to this. Yeah. Absolutely. Those, uh, absolutely. And people just don't understand the Catholic Church. We think we're a works based church as if an atheist can get to heaven with good works. That's not uh -huh. true. Right. But we teach the whole Bible that is faith and good works 
um, that will get us to heaven. Because St. Paul said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. James said, faith without good works is dead. But the Lord re-energizes our life with the Holy Spirit so that we can do the good works that he has prepared for us in advance. But you have to have faith and receive him as personal savior to be saved because without faith, it is impossible to please God. That is the Christian faith. Catholics are Christians. So when we say it's in faith and good works, it doesn't mean I didn't uh, help 10 old ladies across the street. I only help nine. I don't get to heaven. And it doesn't mean an atheist can say, I did good works. I didn't believe in God or join any church, but I did. No, no, we don't believe that, you know. Okay, That's yeah. the only difference that God energizes us to do good works, as St. Paul said, not St. Paul, but St. James said, faith without works is dead. The two aren't exclusionary. We receive him by faith. We're saved, born again. I accepted Jesus as my own personal Savior, definitely. But Catholics simply believe that the Holy Spirit energizes us to do the right. good works, because if we're not doing any good works for anybody, or even preaching, our faith must have been dead, and we really didn't have faith to begin with. It, you know, that's where a lot of Protestants get hung up with the Catholic belief. They think, you're just, think you can really be a good old boy and get to heaven. No, 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 we have to have faith in Jesus Christ to get to heaven. Um, and that old horrible boy, Lucifer the devil, thinks that we can, tricks people into thinking we can wear good deeds against our bad, and that's on the scales of truth. That's not true at all. No, only Christ can get us to heaven. Only way. Pray. Only way. But the only difference is that if I say, you know, I'm never going to go to church again. I'm not going to pray, read my Bible. I accepted Jesus as my Savior, and I'm living the same way I always lived. No good works. Well, then I didn't have faith to begin with. Well, you know, I've, I think I've heard it said that um, if you're really a Christian, you'll start producing works. Exactly. You, what I mean by works is maybe lifestyle changes, exactly. for example. Everybody's different because, like, let's say, let's say you had a, a bad habit. Let's mm -hmm. say... Let's say you said words you weren't supposed to say. Yeah. You accept Christ as your Savior, and then eventually you stop doing that. Yeah. See, some people, <clears throat> I guess what you're saying is some people think that, okay, I'll just ask Christ in my heart, and I can go do anything I want. Yeah. No, no, you that's where you repentance exactly. comes in. You have to repent. you got to say to God, okay, my life's a mess. I can't clean it up. You'll have to clean it up for me. But I come in repentance, first of all. I come believing in your Son. I ask him to be my savior, and God starts cleaning you up, shaping you up, and exactly. Have you and then up. you can do the good works God prepared for you in advance. Yeah. You're doing a good work now by preaching the word. You know, you're doing a good work wow. that flowed from your faith. That's the well, okay. That's fair. But anyway, I just wanted to just kind that's of talk wonderful. about that. Just hit that on the surface there. And that's I, wonderful. I wrote about those comparisons there, and, yeah. and so on. You know, it, it just really galls me. And I've faced this so many times when so many well-meaning Protestants, I don't even know if they're well-meaning, or Baptists, or fundamentalists, think that Catholics aren't saved, that we Catholics are going to go to hell because somehow Rome is the Antichrist and the Pope is the Antichrist. They really believe this, <laughs> and they believe if we come to a Baptist sermon, accept Jesus for the first time, we'll become Christians for the first time because the Catholic Church is leading everybody to hell. That's not true. That is an yeah, insult and see, to I, me. I can't, I, I can't comment on that, but I know that I've known Catholics that were real Christians. So. Yeah, Catholics are Christians, folks. Well, actually, you know, whatever a person's belief or yeah. denomination. Yeah. If you have asked Christ somewhere in your lifetime to be your savior, that's what makes you a Christian. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of I know there's a lot of denominations and there's denominational like, and, differences and doctrinal differences. And doctrine yeah, that's the word doctrinal differences. But you put all that aside, Christ died for the whole world. Exactly. And there has to come a point somewhere in your lifetime where you have said to God Absolutely. I accept Christ as my Savior. Absolutely. Because he died for me. Because, see, that, that takes the emphasis off work because you're not working for it. All you're doing yeah, is yeah. coming like a child and saying, Lord, I believe. Yeah. You sent your son. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, on my show, The Awful Truth About Society, often mm -hmm. I lead people into the sinner's prayer. I said, yeah, you've I'm got sure. to accept Jesus you personally with the, what's going on in the world. Pray this prayer with me. Lord, Jesus, and I know I really yeah. go through the whole thing and uh -huh. get, read your Bible if you've never read it because, you know, I don't want to just prove the existence of God and then for hours and hours. I'm not, you know, if you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll understand the Bible. You'll understand God. Without it, you can't understand, you know. Uh -huh. Faith comes by grace and, you know, it's a gift of God. You can't, you know, I mean, you can't 
you know, it proved the existence of God, I think, but at the same time, and I've debated with atheist friends till 4 a.m. in the morning <laughs> trying to prove them the existence of God, and it just doesn't seem th through. It's this. You know, I think, I think that, I think the thing that with a situation like that, don't even try to convince them. Just let, let nature itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you look at a butterfly. Have you ever looked at the details of a butterfly, for example? No, I've never like been able to wings. catch a butterfly. Yeah, but they're beautiful. Yeah. Just, and oh. you look at the design, or like you know, we live in Montana. You can look up the sky at night, see all mm -hmm. the bazillion stars out there on a good night mm -hmm. when it's not like foggy or something mm -hmm. like that. And nature, I think, in Romans, nature talks about yes. God can be God proved can through the through creation nature. he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Through nature, you can see. You can just look at the animals, like mm -hmm. tigers and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that and see that there's a designer. Yeah, I can't believe that atheists, I think it takes faith to be an atheist. Yeah. Because they really believe there was no God. It just happened all by accident over billions of years yeah. with nobody and nothing created all this beauty. That takes a leap of faith because they don't want to believe in God. Probably. They hate God, and they want to just continue in their sinful lifestyle, whatever they're doing, so they mm -hmm. make an excuse for bad behavior, in a sense. I think that's what atheism is, you know? Atheism mm -hmm. is a religion in and of itself, I think. You ever consider that? Yeah, I think I have. I do, but I agree with you. I think it does take a lot of, uh, I don't know if faith is the right word, but a lot of energy to be an yeah. atheist, you know? Yeah. Have you ever heard of Lee Strobel, the uh, author? No, I haven't. Well, he's a Christian now. He was a... Uh, known atheist and mm -hmm. he was if i understand his story correct correctly he was going to try to prove to the world that there was no god mm -hmm. <laughs> and the more research he did the more he started realizing there was truth out there and, absolutely and then he he went on to ask christ to be a savior he's written a bunch of books he's like this noted scholar now wonderful he, yeah the least trouble if you ever look him up he he could probably debate anybody because he's one. been there yeah yeah, getting so, back to the Catholic bashing where a lot of people try to save Catholics because of our doctrinal differences. You know, some people put religion as their God and doctrine as their God rather mm -hmm. than the relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. You can have all the religion in the world. Mm -hmm. You can have mm -hmm. all the Bible's going to say, I put doctrine first, you're not saved, and that other person not saved. I'm the only one who's saved because I go to the right Baptist church. You're putting religion above a relationship with Jesus. Well, it's like what I said, whatever denominations or doctrinal differences you put all that aside exactly you should yeah as far as when you first come to christ absolutely because i think when you get to the end of your life i don't think god's going to say oh were you a catholic or baptist yeah or exactly, Protestant exactly. Or, no he's going to say yeah. what have you done with my son exactly i exactly. sent my son to die for you mm -hmm. that's exactly. what it's all about i mean if, when you focus on that, it pushes everything else aside. It does. Uh, if you think about it. It does. So, just one Cheryl stop. Absolutely. So, you still doing your show right now? Yes, I am. And yep. you still have those altar calls on your show? Yes, I do. Good for you. Yep, yep. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Maybe we'll let you uh, have an altar call at the end of this. Uh, I'd love with that. I'd be honored. Uh, uh, when we get to the end of this program here. I would be absolutely honored. So, uh, another thing Catholics yeah. get all worked, I mean, no, no, Protestants or Baptists or fundamentalists get all worked up with the Catholic stars. They think we worship Mary and not Jesus. Not true. We honor Mary. We do not worship her. Well, we maybe do not invoke some, I've him. heard some. We do I, not. I know, I know what you're saying. <clears throat> you don't pray to her. Of course not. Well, she, we do pray to her, but we ask for her intercession with Jesus, who's the one mediator between God and man. Now, if I were to try and summon her mm -hmm. through necromancy, spiritism, and light a candle, and say, mm -hmm. I invoke Mary, she must speak to us, Mary. Right, that is know. a grave sin. Right. But if I, if the saints in heaven are in communion, you know, with the saints on earth, and if, um, if I ask you to pray uh, for me at prayer request, uh -huh. to, you know, to the one true you know, mediator between God and man, that's Jesus Christ, that, you know, I'm not asking you to be a God to, to work it out by yourself. It's the same thing with praying to Mary or to the saints. We're just putting in a good request because the saints aren't dead in heaven, you know. Yeah, and you know, I can see some of the doctrinal differences that even yeah. you and I have, but yes. you know, it, it, it again, it boils down to Christ. It does, it does. You know, that's the way I see it, whether it's mm -hmm. whether Catholic, Baptist, Pentecostal, exactly. Assemblies of God, um, what is it, evangelical? Yeah, yeah. There's so many denominations <laughs> yeah. out there, yeah. But from my understanding of the New Testament 
And I even have this. I think you read this in my book here, too. Uh -huh. Let me speed up to this point here. Share this here. Mm -hmm. um, hold on a second. Now, let's, let's glance through this real quick here. This is really short. If somebody came up to you and said, Asaph, how can you know you're going to go to heaven when mm -hmm. you die? Mm -hmm. Well, I wrote in this book, let's go to the answer to find out. Because some people say there's no way you could possibly know you're going to go to heaven when you die. I know. I just, yeah, but well, the Bible says does, yeah. otherwise. And here's the answer right mm -hmm. here. And, and this will sum this up of what we were talking about. Let's go to the Bible for the answer. How do you know you can go to heaven when you die? And first of all, you've probably heard the story of God's love referred to as the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now, the word gospel is the good news. Mm -hmm. You've heard that. And what is this good news? The good news is because of what Jesus did, we can be forgiven. Mm -hmm. What did Christ do? Now, the Bible teaches Adam and Eve when they sinned against God in the garden, yes. they became sinners. Yeah. When they had children, that sin spread. Exactly. To the human race. Exactly. Just as criminals have to pay for their crimes, sinners have to pay for their sins. Mm -hmm. And that penalty, like we talked about at the beginning, is that death penalty that we're all under. For the wages of sin is death, spiritual death. But the good news is that mm -hmm. Christ paid our penalty, as we talked about. Yeah. So to sum this up, to answer the question, what did Christ do? He paid the penalty for our sins. Yeah. How did he do that? By dying on the cross. Yes. His death on the cross was the method used. That's the method God used. Absolutely. The death of his son on the cross to pay that death penalty. Instead of you having to pay it or me having to pay it after we die. It says the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ, the virgin born, sinless son right. of God, has paid the penalty for all of your sins and for all of my sins that we deserve mm -hmm. by dying on the cross. He was buried and rose three days later to grant you and me everlasting life. In heaven, yep. Yes. So because of what Christ did when he died on the cross, God offers a pardon. God can offer forgiveness yes. of sins. But we have to reach out like a gift and yes. take that by asking Christ to be our Savior. Exactly. That's basically it. And the, now, I know there's, like I said, doctrinal differences, yeah. but we're talking about what Christ did on that cross. Right. And that's where I think everybody basically agrees as far as in Christendom. Yeah. And the beautiful yeah. thing is we don't have to fear death. We that's don't have correct. to fear going to hell. We're not, you know. Now, if you're an atheist, of course you're going to fear death or some other reason. You're going to fear death. We don't have to fear death. Yeah. Death it will be glorious heaven. It's more beautiful and it, You know, heaven. I think, I haven't died yet, obviously, because I wouldn't be talking yes. to you, but... I think death will happen faster than you can blink your eye. It will, yes. I just think, boom, all of a sudden, you're in heaven. Exactly. I just think it'll be just, you'll just take a breath, wake up, all of a sudden, hey, mm -hmm. I get here. I'm here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll probably be some angel ready exactly. to escort you uh, into the throne room of the Lord. So exactly. You can meet the Lord. <laughs> exactly. But I, I think it'll happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but you're right, though. I don't. You know, I had mid I maybe watched a lot of the old movies I should have been mm -hmm. looking at when I was a kid. And you get all scared to death. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, what's it going to feel like? Are we gonna, it's going to be dragging on. No, I yeah. think it'll happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. Just suddenly. You'll just mm -hmm. suddenly be in heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who have accepted Christ yeah, as Savior. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to elaborate on hell, but I'm going to go there for a second. Well, that is the death penalty. If we don't yes, receive I Jesus, know, is that, that, I know. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, believe. there's... Because, like I said, the death penalty is separation from God. Uh-huh. The place called hell. People don't like to hear about hell. They don't. Nope. But that's what awaits people. And God doesn't want that to happen, so he sent this mm -hmm. son. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have escaped that death penalty. You don't have to fear death like you're saying or mm -hmm. worry about going to a place called hell when you die. And, you know, that, that's, that's creepy when you think about it. It is. A place called hell. Think about yeah, it. Yeah, it is. It's very frightening. Yeah. It's I read about yeah, it. You're you're separated, it. Yeah, yeah, you're separated from the Creator who created you. Yeah. And, that, and even if there was no fire and brimstone and stuff, it would still be hell just being separated from the it, Lord. It would be, yes. So the separation from God is bad enough, and then you got to deal with the, the sulfur and the torment. Yeah, and the fire and the demon. And and everything uh -huh. just horrifying for eternity. Yeah. And it'll be dark. Yes. You know, the misconception, people always say, oh, well, when I get to hell, I'm going to have a party. No, you're not. No, you're not. No. Even Dr. David Jeremiah said that in a sermon I heard just last night. 
you know, I, I mentioned him mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. First time when I told you about his sermon that I listened to was, I think it was the, the name was called The Judge, The Great White Throne Judge. Yes. But anyway, hell's not going to be no party. You're not no. going to be drinking a Budweiser in hell, no, my friends. No, you will not. No, you will not. No. <laughs> you're going to be suffering for your sin, and you're going to be totally isolated alone. Yes. You might hear the screams of other people suffering, but it's going to be dark in that place. Yes, it will be. And you will not be concerned about their suffering, because you're going to be suffering yourself. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Billy Graham says, we don't know if it's fire in the sense of what we know, but whatever this substance is, it's probably going to be horrible. Mm-hmm. So whether it's literal fire like we know or whatever it says when it says fire, it's going to be very hot. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. You know, uh, they said the sun was, the sun is like 23 million degrees Fahrenheit. Whew. That yeah. is hot. That's just the sun. Yeah. 23 million degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. Yeah. I don't even think Superman can handle that. No, no. <laughs> no, he couldn't. Nope. Now, just think. I, we don't know how hot hell is, is, but it's probably very hot. Yep. So you've got sulfur. You've got heat. You've got thirst. You have all these desires that will not be fulfilled. Exactly. Thirst. Hunger. Yeah. You'll be weeping and crying, and there won't be any beauty in hell no. there won't be any flowers to cheer you up it'll just no. be black and hot yeah yeah <laughs> that's i guess the way to describe it that's the truth yeah and if the sun is not even near how how hot hell is gonna be you just don't want to go yeah, there. yeah exactly you just really don't want to go there yeah yeah so i hope people even watching this comical show that we normally do uh-huh. will invite Christ into their heart if they've not done that. Exactly. How, do, you buy, um, what, do you believe in life after death experiences where people temporarily die and then come back to the I, dead? Before I answer that, and that's an interesting question, I'm not a theologian, okay? Uh-huh. I don't claim to be one, so I could be dead wrong. Uh-huh. So I want to make that put that claim in there before I answer your question. But to answer your question, no, I don't believe in that, and I'll tell you why. Right. Now, I, again, I could be wrong. I don't believe in near-death experiences because the Bible is very clear. Mm -hmm. There's an appointed time Mm -hmm. for man to die. True. So if somebody has this so-called experience, you know, your mind can play tricks on you Mm -hmm. when you're like under anesthesia or you're not yourself. I know because like when I went to the dentist Mm -hmm. and they put that gas mask on me, boy, you'd be imagining all kinds of things that just seem real. You really do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're always taught as a kid that you go through some tunnel. Uh Uh-huh. So if you hear that all your life and then you're in a situation where you're not fully yourself, you'll probably tend to believe that. Yeah, yeah. Because of what you were told. Yeah. I personally don't believe that, and and that's just my personal position. And, again, I could be wrong. Yeah. The reason I believe in it, there are too many documented cases where people have been dead for like 15 minutes. I know, They're and, working I, and on I'm it, not and disputing that. It's just kind of like where they get a glimpse of this, or the soul is temporarily gone to heaven or hell, because people have described hell, and they're even, I know, know, just yeah, unbelievable. And so I'm not going to say yeah. for them that it, it's not. I'm just saying, me personally, I don't believe it, because, you know, again, your mind can play tricks on you. Mm-hmm. And I take the position that Dr. Charles Stanley said, mm-hmm. I heard him say this once, that at the point of death, the devil at the last minute may try one last effort to attack you. He will. trick you. Yes. Even though you'll be surrounded by angels, yes. he'll still be up there screaming. Mm-hmm. And here's where I'm going with this. Suppose you have never asked Christ into mm-hmm. your heart, okay? Yes. And you're about to die. Yes. And you see this tunnel. Mm-hmm. Now, you think, you're, you think you see this tunnel, and you think you might be on your way to heaven going through this so-called tunnel... But you haven't asked Christ into your heart. So you, you know, you think at the last minute, as you're so-called going through a tunnel, you're on your way to heaven, and all of a sudden you wake up in hell. Yeah, exactly. See, and that's what I mean by a last-minute ditch effort trick. Yeah, exactly. That absolutely. I think Dr. Charles Stanley was talking about, that at the point of death, he's going to try to mess with you one last time. He may not be able to physically touch you, but he can accuse you, mm-hmm. scream at you, holler yep. at you, even though you're surrounded by angels. Yeah. But see, this is why I don't... This is why I don't believe in the tunnel, the tunnel theory, because, like I said earlier, then 
you're not asking Jesus into your heart. You're just going through a tunnel, think you're on your way to heaven. You haven't exactly. asked him in your heart. And that's why I don't believe that. But yeah. again, I put a disclaimer, I'm not a theologian. Right. And I know there are people who claim that they've seen heaven. And I'm just going to say, if that works for them, okay. I'm not yeah. going to shatter their belief. Uh huh. But me personally, I don't buy into that because we're always taught that. So that you're, you're conditioned yeah, as I a know. kid, you know, that... At, if you think you're going to die or you're hallucinating or something, that, that's what you're going to see. And the Bible doesn't say True. at the point of death you're going through a tunnel. True. It just says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And I think that's an instantaneous thing. Mm-hmm. And so on. And even if you do go through a tunnel, I think it's going to happen very, very quickly anyway. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not going to shatter someone's belief. I mean, I, I, exactly. I've heard the stories... Pastor Greg Laurie doesn't believe that either. And, and, and I would just say be careful. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Because if, if you're taught something all your life, that's what your mind's going to go when you're not yourself. And I'm going to tell you, like I said, when, when you're not yourself, whether you're under medication or whatever, your mind can just take you places. That's true. And you just swear that it happened mm-hmm. when it didn't. Yeah, yeah. So that's just food for thought. You yeah. Know? Mind if we discuss the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons? I've been approached by Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, they knock on your door. We, sure. we discuss that. The Jehovah's Witnesses, I don't really fully understand them, but they don't believe in the Trinity. We, as Christians, we believe in the Trinity, mm-hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ also was God. Mm-hmm. They don't believe that Jesus was God. He's just the, he was the Son of God, yeah. but not equal to the Father. And, I well, that kind of sounds almost like when we were talking about the Muslims earlier. They don't absolutely that either. But you know, I, I have to admit, I don't know enough about the Mormons, and I don't know enough about Jehovah's Witnesses, so I can't really comment. Well, they but... believe in Jehovah that Jehovah gave His word or something. It was um, I'm not sure, but a Jehovah that mm-hmm. there were witnesses from Jehovah. I'm not sure the whole thing, but they have a very strange concept of the Bible. They don't even allow you people to celebrate birthdays or Christmas because yeah. oh, that's all the world. Yeah. Very, very strange that Jehovah, whoever founded the Jehovah's Witnesses, found the f- true gospel that had been lost through the ages. And, well, see, the and that the just, that's so unlikely. Exactly. I, mean, I think the Bible is clear. You got the Old Testament, and the New Testament. Right. And there's a 400 year gap in between the Old and the New Testament right. from Malachi mm-hmm. to Matthew. Those, mm-hmm. those years are silent. Mm-hmm. But there's a consistency between the Old and the New Testament. And I don't believe that some one man can just get a vision from God mm-hmm. all of a sudden to complete what the Bible's already exactly. complete. You know. If that makes any sense. Yeah. So. Same with the Mormons. They so. believe that Christ's teaching was lost through heresy. Yeah, see, I don't buy that. And that, that it was, finally, whoever, I think it was Joseph Smith, found, had a revelation from yeah. Jesus and saw Jesus of like, I want to complete the gospel. See, and that is so yeah. unlikely. That's exactly. so unlikely. And, you know, I'm not here to pick on Mormons, but uh, that's unlikely. I don't believe that yeah. some one man just got this vision and now there's a third testament exactly. or this stuff about um, Joseph Smith is going to finish what Jesus didn't finish. Come on. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? They're going to say that? that? That's not likely. Besides, not likely. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you and I'm, I am with you yeah. till the end of the world. Right. Meaning the church cannot go astray. That's why I believe that the Protestants are separated. Brethren are completely wrong when they believe that we had the primitive church, but then it went astray and reformed into the Catholic church and the original gospel was lost. That's impossible. I, I don't think so because, you know, I was just listening on the radio just this morning yeah. about William Tyndale, I think was his name. Mm-hmm. He was alive like in the 15th century, 14th century, something mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. 14 something. He's the guy that's responsible for taking the, I think it's the uh, Greek, Latin, Hebrew, uh-huh. and translating it into the common mm-hmm. language so that everybody could read it. And of course, the higher ups in the church at that time were not comfortable with that, uh-huh. but he did it anyway. And I think they invented the printing press mm-hmm. and duplicated these Bibles. Now, he was martyred for his faith. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing is the king at the time, two years after the death of this person, gave leeway to have all these Bibles 
written in the uh, common mm -hmm. language, and so on. Mm -hmm. So I just find that interesting that yeah, you know, that the word of God just spread like that. Mm -hmm. So just yeah, food for thought. Well, I'm gonna play a tune here while we're talking. You got any suggestions? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I'll think of something. Now, as far as unity, I've been to unity churches. Some relatives did take me to unity. Unity, I think, is kind of a heresy. Yeah. I don't I fully understand I it. I think I'd have to agree with you on that, too. Because they believe that God is spirit, and Jesus and the God, you know, the Christ consciousness is divine, but we're all evolving uh -huh. to the Christ Consciousness. They don't believe in any religion or doctrine, just right. spirituality. That all religions lead to God, and that God put us here to be reincarnated. They believe in reincarnation. Well, they're not the only ones. I think. Uh, I think some certain Buddhists probably believe that too. Yeah, they do. They believe in reincarnation. I don't. I think it's I don't very clear. I, you know, very it's clear. It's appointed unto man. He to die once. To die. There's an appointed time. We don't know when that appointed time is. Like, you might live mm -hmm. to be 90 years old, which I hope you do. But my point is there's an appointed time. And we die once. Not many times. Yeah, so. there's an appointed time, right. And after that is judgment. Right. I mean, that's pretty clear. And since Jesus Christ did die for our sins once on the cross, guess what? To pay that penalty, we do not have to be reincarnated over and over again to pay for our yeah, karma in a right. past life. Yeah, that's right. Christ did it all. He did it on the cross and, and was buried and rose three days later. Exactly. So that's what, And Unity believes that we can evolve into be God no. and evolve into the not Christ. Not No, no, we can't. Not do likely. Meditation, New Age. It's very New Age. It's I know. And, well, and I think all that is just totally false. It is. It is. I'm just saying it in the... It is. In a loving way, way I exactly. Can. That's right. There's only one way. John fourteen six. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man yes can come to the, the Father but through me." Yeah, and even unity, they don't believe in the devil or hell. They just well, don't, and that's really. I don't well. see how they could not believe in that stupid devil. And I'm not trying to stick up for that stupid devil, but yeah. if you look at all the crime in the world. I know. Yeah, I and know. All the stuff happening. But anyway, I'm not, I don't want to give any attention to him. But yeah. But I want to focus more on Christ. But yeah, I'm. The I just wanted to compare I know, religions. I realize that. I know. I realize and, that. The, the, and even like the four square gospel is kind of very strict. More, I'm not sure what the four square. Well, no, I think the four squares are Christians from. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, I, I've been to a four square church. Mm. And you know, it's like okay, it's like the Church of God. They don't believe in instruments. You know, like pianos and stuff in the church. They just sing. Oh, that's odd. Well, no, it, it may be odd to us, but to them, mm. it's important. Yeah, yeah. And so that's fine. Mm -hmm. Or like the Church of Christ, I think they have some differences in there too. And yeah. I've seen like church services with the Church of God, and it seems harmless to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just that you won't see a piano in their church if I if I'm saying that correctly. Mm -hmm. They just sing everything a cappella, mm -hmm. and I guess that's harmless. Mm -hmm. you know, they're just singing the old hymns. They mm -hmm. just no instrument. Mm -hmm. No tambourines, no nothing. Mm -hmm. No organ. <laughs> but hey, that's what they believe in. Exactly. But from what I understand, like we were talking about doctrinal differences mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, there's, there's, there's going to be differences. There Even are. In the, era, in the uh, New Testament church, as that there was expanding, yes. they mm -hmm. were starting to have differences expanding then. Exactly. But they always focused on Christ anyway, and I think that's the most consistent thing in Christendom since exactly the beginning. Is exactly, that, yeah, exactly, you know. yeah. So just just food for thought. Exactly, I think they've got one Church of God service on Sunday mornings. I've looked at it once mm -hmm. or twice, and it's it's different. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it works for them. But mm -hmm. I think they're still teaching the same. Mm -hmm. gospel message and I think that's all that really matters yeah so yeah. if you go to a church and they don't have a piano or an organ well if that mm -hmm. works for you fine if it yeah, doesn't yeah. just go to a church that has one and exactly wish your brothers over there on the other side well and mm -hmm. yeah fine I personally I you know I, I admit I don't go to church right now I watch Pastor Harold Salem on yeah, Sunday yeah. mornings he's a Christian worship hour mm -hmm. <laughs> yep He's from South Dakota, and I like him because he does the old style, mm. old fashioned, good old old fashioned gospel preaching style, and they do all the old hymns, you know, they do that rock and roll Christian yeah, music. Yeah. Not that I have anything against mm -hmm. it, but that's the way to describe it. Mm -hmm. So, but it's just old fashioned, the old fashioned yeah. preaching. 
and he gives an uh, invitation at the end of the program. Wonderful. So that's pretty cool. Man, it's 95 years old mm -hmm. up there still preaching. <laughs> <laughs> that, that show, those signs are slowing down. God bless it. We, uh -huh. need, we need people like that. So, uh -huh. Yeah, Harold Salem. He comes on, uh, let's see if I can remember. I think it's 23 2. Uh -huh. The ABC channel. Uh -huh. channel 23. Uh -huh. You don't have to have cable, just yeah, yeah. the box. 23 2. Because they have 23 1, 23 2, and 23 3. So he comes on 23 2 at 9 o'clock our time, Sunday morning. Uh -huh. So I've been watching him. But where I'm going with this is I was thinking. I'd like to go to a good Jewish church maybe one day and check it out. Mm. Now, uh, let me make this clear. The Messianic Jewish peoples are the ones that have accepted Christ as Savior. They believe uh -huh. in, they call him Yeshua, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, they believe that Christ is the Savior. Uh huh. And uh, there are some Jewish people who don't believe to this day that Christ is mm -hmm. the Savior. So that's why I'm making a distinction mm -hmm. between the Messianic Jewish people. They're the ones who know Christ as their Savior. Mm -hmm. And this is going to sound disturbing. Some of the reasons why our Jewish friends don't believe in Christ, they look at history and see all the bad things that were done in the name yes. of religion and Christ. And that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, Jesus didn't do those things right. to people. It was man that did right. those things. So... I think if you're dealing with Jewish people, the best way to handle that is don't even go in the Old Testament because they won't hear right. it. Right. Use like the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. Get in the Old Testament. Right. Like right. Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. you know, he was wounded for our transgressions mm -hmm. and stuff. And that's probably the best way yes. you'll be able to reach our Jewish friends. Mm -hmm. And you know, speaking of Jewish people, and maybe this is a plug, why don't people get over it? I know. Leave them Jewish people alone. They're I just agree. As special. In fact, God chose that nation yes, to yes. bring Christ into the mm -hmm. world. And these and this irks me when I hear these people, well, I don't like Jews. I don't Yeah, exactly. Get over it. Exactly. If you've got a problem, either go see Dr. Phil or just go exactly. in your house alone and exactly. get on your knees and take it up with God. Exactly. But I don't have a problem with Jewish people. I mm -hmm. think they're wonderful people. They, you know, they, yeah, they are. And I'm all for praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes, like, yes. Like the Old Testament says, like mm -hmm. you know, you, you hear on the Christian radio, you know, they'll have like yes, a, yes. like a YNOP radio. They'll have a moment of silent prayer where they're praying for the Jewish people. Yes, wonderful. And you know, not just the Jewish people alone, but people in general. Mm -hmm. I think we're all. Whether you're black, white, Native American, Hispanic, whatever. Exactly. Uh, you know, if you read Revelation 5, I think it yeah. is, when we get to heaven, there will be all kinds of nations and tongues and <clears throat> tribes all worshiping God. Yes. And there'll probably be some, there'll probably, you get to heaven, there'll probably be some nationality we never heard of. What are you? Where'd you come exactly. from? Exactly. You know? But it won't be in a prejudice way, you yeah. know? It'll be like, wow, I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, there'll be so many tribes and tongues that's gonna be pretty cool think of it exactly All these nationalities in heaven exactly <laughs> so you know you don't like jews get over it i you agree don't like I blacks agree. get over it Just i agree get a life get over it you know there's no racism in heaven no, no bigotry. well that's that's where i was going with that there will be no bigotry no no uh -huh. racial issues <laughs> exactly because god created everyone with a human soul and we yeah, all have to stand correct. equally before the cross oh yeah you know like in this life you know how we have like people who have positions and stuff like yeah that. you know like let's say politicians for example you know you watch a speech they might say something like uh they'll acknowledge the lawmakers they say distinguished lawmakers mm -hmm. and, you know they go down mm -hmm. this list and then they get to the normal people and they say and ladies and gentlemen you know it's that kind of thing mm -hmm. but in heaven there will be none of that there will be none of this who's above whoever exactly. as far as culture or society or whatever exactly it'll just be we're all we're all on the same level ground or mm -hmm. will be i should say when we get to heaven mm -hmm. in fact in the eyes of god we're all on the same level ground everything's level at the foot of the cross exactly you ever heard that at yes the foot that's of the what cross, i'm trying to say yep at the foot of the cross everything is level we're all equal mm -hmm. men women we're all equal no one's higher or above or better or whatever no one's you know because you, what are you going to do? You just sit up there and impress the Almighty, right? I don't yeah. think so. No, you can't. No. <laughs> Any God that can just say, 
let there be light. Ding! And yeah, exactly. Like, How are you going to impress that God? Exactly. If he created you, you think you're going to impress the guy that made you? Look what I can do, God. Exactly. Nah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, so we're going to all be on the same level ground, but, uh, it, you know, I admit I didn't do much playing, but uh, this was interesting to talk about yes. this comparison. You know, like I said, I'm not here, to, we're almost out of time. I'm not here to bash anybody. I'm not here to attack anyone's faith. Right. Or criticize anybody. I am just, we've just made comparisons. But the New Testament is clear. Christ is the way. Exactly. The exactly. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And the life. Oh, goodness. So, you got any final words you want to say? We're just about running out of time here. Well, for those of you who do not know Jesus Christ, may I make an altar call? Yeah, let's do that. While you're doing that, uh, I'll play very quietly uh, in the background here. Hold on, let me get started. I personally believe that the times are grave, and we're facing some very grave times in our world. But like I have said so and asked so many times on my television show, doesn't matter whether I'm a punk rocker, what racer, what everything, if you want to know Jesus as your savior, for him to transform your life forever, and you can have assurance of salvation, you know you're going to go to heaven, please pray this prayer with me. Don't tremble lest this be the last call you will ever receive. So. Pray this prayer with me, Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Lord Jesus Christ, I know I am a sinner, and I have not lived my life for you. But Lord Jesus, I've heard you did die on the cross for me. And you rose again on the third day that I might have life in heaven forever with you. So I turn from my sins and your wickedness, and I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my personal Savior. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Give me the grace of your Holy Spirit, and give me the grace to live for you and serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into my life and saving my soul so that I can go to heaven when I die. Amen and amen. That's the most important prayer you ever prayed. Read, if you don't have a Bible, read your Bible as much as you can. Pray daily to our Lord Jesus as a friend, in your own words, mm-hmm. for protection from anything, and that you started a new life in Christ. Isn't that exciting? Now, let me say one other thing, elaborating on that here. Um, let me. Uh... That's a beautiful invitation there, by the way. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, it's based on Pat Robertson's invitation well, on 700 well, It doesn't make any difference. Yeah. I, I understand that. But uh, like we said, whatever denominational differences, Christ is the way. Yes. And if that... Oh, here it is right here. Let me read this here. Um, it's like what you were saying at the beginning. If you've never asked Christ into your heart, you can just pray that prayer, which you just recited just now. And if there's anybody watching who has prayed that prayer, my suggestion would be start reading your Bible. Exactly. Find a good church and yeah. say, hey, I prayed with that punk rocker on ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they'll just guide you from there. Exactly. And, you know, you know you'll, you'll find your way as far as learning more about God. Mm-hmm. That was a beautiful prayer. Thanks. But, you know, there, there are a lot of differences as far as doctrinal, but if yes. you've asked Christ into your heart, that's the most important exactly. thing. Exactly. So, I guess we should just sign off. Let me make some acknowledgments. That's such a beautiful invitation. Oh, Let's thanks. not spoil it by talking about something else. We'll just say that for the next show. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've asked Christ into your heart. If not, just God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save exactly. me. Exactly. However you want to word it. Just get along with exactly. God and give that invitation. That was a beautiful thanks. Uh, off call you did. Mm-hmm. I am ASAP Adonai, your host, and thank you for being part of this edition of ASAP Cafe. We'll probably call it Comparisons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I've just never seen such a beautiful invitation, for real, in a long time. So affectionately on my left, our aging rocker, Emmett. So uh, any final final words you want to say about uh, Christ or anything? Uh, uh, just uh, just anything? please don't put... Uh, doctrinal din- uh, din- um, uh, divisions or denominations above a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't there say, those churches over there um, stay apart from me. I am holier than thou. You warned about yeah. that in the gospel. <laughs> those uh-huh. Catholics aren't saved. Or those churches aren't saved. They're not born again. No, 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 no. no. Right. Please. It's a relationship with Jesus that will get you to heaven. Not saying, I'm superior now. You can't have right. a, a heart of pride saying, stay up, away from me. I am holier than thou. Right, right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. So until our next show, Maranatha.
freeze right on that note. Make yourself at home. I'll shut this down. We'll do another show in a little bit. All right.